Yeah, I don't know time here to pray. Uh, so thanks, thanks for coming. Uh, we've been leading ourselves into the place of prayer doing a study to uh, the book of Daniel. So we've been in verse one, yes, since last Friday. So let me just pick up from where we ended last Friday, uh, yesterday. <laughs> you know, we're just talking about the fact that uh, sometimes you have dreams, right, that could scare you. And it could come from God. It could be something from a devil. But the key way you, you need to know is that God does not use fear uh, to lead his people. He doesn't use fear. Fear is not a tool in the armory of God. Fear is the opposite of faith. Fear is the opposite of love. God is love. And there's no way I can please God except but by faith. So God is not going to use that which is anti him to lead us. In fact, the Bible tells us that uh, the intent of prophecy is to build us up, is to edify us. Right, so it's not to make us depressed, worried, concerned, as it were, you know, but rather it's to build us up, is to is to show us things that will bring us to God, not away from God, is to bring us something that will lift us up, not push us down. Right. So when I have a dream, the intent is never to get me into a place of depression, is never to get my whole world upside down. Is never to, for the intent of me, now start running from one prayer house to the other, right? Uh, so I need to know that if God gives me a dream or a dream is a vision, right? It's always with the intent that he wants me to have a solution. God will not give me a dream as to something where there's no solution, right? If he gives me a dream, then there's a solution to it. And my, 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 my responsibility is then to seek him both for the interpretation of the dream and what he would have me do, right? Here we see uh, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And that dream, obviously, we know is from God. But he was troubled, right? He did not know the meaning of it, right? It got him into a place of depression where he could not sleep, Right? That is really not God's intent in giving us a dream, right? But we can, I mean, that can get us there if we don't know the right thing to do, right? Nebuchadnezzar had the right thing to do. And all he needed to do was call the, 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 uh, the astrologers, the dreamers, interpreters, and all of that, and get the meaning to whatever dream he has. But let me bring it down to how <laughs> we are not Nebuchadnezzar. So I have a dream that's troubling me. First of all, I knew that, that God's intent is not to steal from me, is not to kill me, is not to destroy me. So that should give me peace on its own, right? Peace because God has not given me a dream for the intent of stealing from me. He's not giving me a dream to steal my sleep. He's not giving me a dream to steal my joy, right? He's not giving me a dream to kill me. He's not giving me a dream to destroy me. Rather, that he has given me a dream because he wants to give me life and life more abundantly. That has to be my disposition. If that is not my disposition, I have missed it, right? If a dream is from God, it will always be for the intent of giving you life and giving you life more abundantly. And only if you then go to God with that disposition, with that mindset, will you be able to understand or get the meaning or interpretation of a dream that you're seeking from God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thanks for praying. Thanks for praying. Still just sharing about dreams out to share in the morning. You know, for me, it's, if I have a dream, again, I need to seek for interpretation, understanding, right? I need to understand if the dream is from God, it's not to steal from me, it's not to kill me, and it's not to destroy me. If a dream is from God, it needs to give me life and to give me life more abundantly. You know, I'm emphasizing on this because a lot of people are being held captive because of things like this. The Bible says that people are held captive because of the fear of death. The fear of death holds people captive, right? That's why people go to all of these Babalawo or the Babalawo uniform when we wear garments, you know, or red garment or wherever they wear it, 
you know, and they do the exactly the same thing as witchcraft would do. Because when the people go to witchcraft, what they're asking is, what is my future? Who is after me? What is holding me back? How can you help me? They do exactly the same thing people do with witchcraft. And the Bible says that you should not allow a witch to leave, right? Sorcery is a sin, right? But people still do it. People do it. They just use religion to cover it up. God does not support witchcraft in whatever form it is. For whatever reason, God does not want us to be running after people to tell us about the future. Because that's what sorcery is about. That's what witchcraft is about. That's what God says he hates. And God says you should not allow the, the, the do not suffer the witch to live. But that's what we do in church. I mean, we go to church and we try to, as it were, glorify this. By who oh, call people's name out to care? Are you there? This is the reason why. You know, there is a place for it, but we need, we need to be careful that we don't cross the boundaries of the word, right? A lot of places I've heard where people use it as deception, right? It's not from God. They already know the person. They already found out about the person. They come to a congregation and start saying things they found out, not by the spirit of God, but by inquiry, right? There's a fake and there's also the true one, right? Not all of it is fake, not all of it is real, you know? So that's why you have to discern. You have to not go into any of these gatherings with fear because if you go with fear, you will just take anything. Right? People are fascinated by magic. Anything that is magical, you'll get a crowd. Right? People don't want God, though. They want a God they can use, not a God they can worship. That's why in the States, you, you don't have too much of it in Nigeria, but you go to the States, you have a lot of sorcery, you know, open, open shops here and there. You see, palm reading, tarot card. All of that. I mean, it's an open thing in the in in in, in the developed world. You don't you don't see too many of it around, you know. But you find it in places that call themselves church, right? Where they will give you a, a vision. A dream is a vision. I mean, it's not just that you're not the one dreaming it. It's someone you go to that is saying, "Yeah, I had a dream for you." It's your in-laws that are doing you. It's your sister in the village. It's your so so and so, and you start having hatred for those people because they have given you a vision, which is not true. In most cases, I can tell you, in most cases, it's not true. But they, 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 they know what the state of your heart, and they're using the state of your heart against you. You believe them, and you can almost do anything for them. So some of them end up abusing that. So they end up sleeping with some women. They end up doing several atrocities because the, the people that are coming to them are already captivated by fear. Oh, let's go to Imo. Prophet has said, oh, yeah, yeah. it's not a fear of death. That's what the Bible says. People are held captive by the fear of death. So we have to be careful, right? We're not called to run after vision. We're not called to run after knowing tomorrow. So, you know, knowing tomorrow is a, running after knowing tomorrow is a sin. That's what horoscope is all about. Yeah, oh, today will be good. You will meet a lover today. You meet someone that will give you this. Oh, let me read your palm. Oh, your palm says your destiny is good. Oh, your destiny is bad. It is. It's a sin. <laughs> That's all witchcraft. It's all carried on the witchcraft. The reason why is because when you think you know, you know, you stop exercising yourself in the stream of life, right? You're held captive by that which someone is telling you, you know? I don't know how to even explain it. If God says he hates it, he hates it. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. We just need to be sure that we, we're not held under the spell of that which God says he hates. Because when we get ourselves there, we're under a curse, not a blessing. I'm going to stop there for today. Thank you. Anybody wants to hide anything, subtract anything from what I said? Did I make sense? I don't know. Joshua, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, um, it, it's obvious. It's obvious when people run up as visions and days and that. But uh, the first, in most cases, they get into trouble. They have more trouble than when they went there. You know, if we just decide to live by the word of God, we will do well. We will do well. Live by the word of God. Handle issues. Go to God. And sometimes God can give revelation to others to give to you. But don't share this thing around. Don't share some, don't raise people to share mm -hmm. things like that around. Uh, some churches are over emphasizing the prophetic 
and think that they're prophetic means that God will be telling, for telling people issues and things like that until they have a long line of people who want to see them for one vision or the other. Some of them meant well, they, 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 they don't mean to be seen, but they just lack knowledge of uh, the prophetic ministry. And uh, at the end of the day, they make the shipwreck of people's life. I think the emphasis is to live by the word of God. And whenever God wants to inform you, want, want to pass an information across to you, he knows how to do that. He knows how to do it. If you are living right with him, you are believing him, you are working with him, you are working in the word of God, if there is a specific revelation that, you, that, that is necessary for your advancement or for what he has placed in your hand to do, he knows how to get it across. And he will get it across with the interpretation, with the understanding. He wants to speak to you. He will speak to you in the language that you are going to understand. Well, sometimes you may have to pray with him for uh, interpretation of what you have seen, but God also knows to interpret and get it across to us. Just in the case of Daniel, he has to send an angel down to come and explain. In some other cases, he gives another revelation to explain the former revelation. You know? And you can't choose for him how he's going to do it. You can't choose for him. You just have to wait on him and see uh, what, where, what, where the way is leading you. I think the best thing is to live by the word of God. And that is what he himself emphasized that we live by the word of God. That is Absolutely. the best thing. Absolutely. I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. Starro, anything to add? Oh, BG, you have anything to add? Go ahead. Okay, praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I most of the ways that God speaks to me is through uh, dreams, and so I have learned to get the general overview. Um, you know, most times we hear that okay, when somebody is eating in the train, it means it's uh, it's being initiated or it's being done. You know, there is a general, uh, a general interpretation that most people give. But I, because I know that God uses that means to speak to me most times, I had to go beyond that to start uh, doing my research, you know, about symbols, about all those uh, images, and what they represent. So uh, recently, I found that, that eating in the dream is not necessarily <laughs> being initiated, but that you are partaking of something. And uh, it may even be a revelation that you are getting you know, a, a message because, uh, because you are dining with somebody, you are getting a revelation, you are getting a message from that person, you know, fellowship, uh, taking a cue from Jesus dining with his disciples. So it's not always that, oh, you have, you have been initiated into a cult or something like that. So I, 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 I do a lot of research on that and uh, it has sort of set me free, you know, to, <laughs> to an extent. So I believe that, uh, Visions, dreams, and all those other uh, supernatural means that God uses to speak to us should not just be taken at face level, but we should do our due diligence to, you know, do more research and know more about those things that God generally speaks to us and then specifically says to us. Thank you. Amen. Great. Amen. Great. Great, great. great. Sister okay, anything to say before we shut it down? Our time is gone. No, oh, thank you. Yes, ma'am. You said no, you want to say something? No. No, all right. <laughs> all right. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Let me let you go. Have a great remaining of the afternoon. See you tomorrow, God willing. God bless right. you. Thank you. Bye.